Hey everyone, I'm back, and today we're going to be talking about Crazy Stupid Love, and this movie came out in 2011, and it's a film that I've seen once before. I remembered liking it, and so I just bought the Blu-ray to see how it would hold up, and I still really like this movie, and it's one of those movies that has multiple storylines going on, and it eventually connects it all together, and that's one of the things that I did like about it is that it uh, balanced all these different storylines very carefully, kind of like Magnolia or Bad Times at the El Royale, uh, something like that. And it's one of those uh, movies that succeeds. There's not too much going on. And at the same time, it develops every storyline just enough uh, to make it interesting. And the performances, I think, are really good in this movie. Steve Carell, Julianne Moore... Ryan Gosling, Kevin Bacon, great cast. Emma Stone is in it too. <laughs> and they're all uh, really fun to watch. And the comedy uh, really worked for me. I thought this movie was pretty funny, especially with Ryan Gosling in the movie. <laughs> he was my favorite part. <laughs> and he has a lot of great moments that really work uh, for me in this movie. I also liked uh, the characters overall in this movie. I thought that they were very well-defined and likable characters. I mean, most of them are. Even if you don't like uh, the character, some of the characters in this movie, I do think uh, that uh, the movie develops them just enough for you to, at the very least, understand who these characters are and kind of get behind them. And that's uh, one thing that this movie does very well, surprisingly. And I liked uh, how, uh, without spoiling anything, I liked how uh, things... Uh, tied together, like all these different storylines that came together into like one big story. And I like that. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> and although this movie is uh, pretty solid throughout, very entertaining, it doesn't really waste any time. It's only two hours long. And I do feel as though that's a good runtime and it doesn't overstay its welcome. But uh, despite uh, the entertaining uh, runtime and likable characters and all that stuff. I do think the movie does have some problems. And one of the things that I don't really like about this movie is the lighting for the daytime scenes. And I just felt as though it was overexposed and everything was just so blown out to, to the point where it was distracting. It was like... <laughs> Early 2000s uh, Steven Spielberg uh, movie's level of distracting that just took me out of the movie. And although I did uh, mention that I liked uh, the storylines, uh, being uh, multiple storylines, uh, eventually connecting into one big story, the only one that I didn't really care for is the one with the son and uh, the babysitter. Like, that's uh, the only one that I can do without uh, because I didn't really care about that one too much. <laughs> Like, I just felt as though it didn't need to be in the movie. Wasn't a huge on the, the music for this movie. Not that it was terrible, it just didn't do anything for me. I just, I'm not going to remember this movie for the music. Like, I like uh, the licensed music, but uh, the actual score for the film, it's just nothing I'm going to remember the movie for. And also, a quick side note about this movie. Like, in the beginning, for... I don't know how long, uh, there were lots of shots of feet. <laughs> and for a while there, I was thinking I was watching a Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> but eventually that stops, and the movie just stops doing that. But overall, I did like the movie, and it did uh, have a good story and uh, well-defined characters, which is something that I'm a little starved for in romantic comedies, is that... The comedy works, the romance works, the character work, characters work, and the performances also work. Like, you need a lot to, to work in your movies. Like, it, these characters also... Like, there's also good chemistry required for something like this to work, and I think that they managed to pull it off somehow, and I think it's a solid movie that I will happily rewatch another time. So check this movie out whenever you get the chance. And with all that being said, I'm going to give Crazy Stupid Love a 7 out of 10. Thank you for watching my videos. As always, if you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below. You thought of Crazy Stupid Love and my social media links. They will all be in the description, so follow me there. And last but not least, subscribe to be a part of Fully Nation. And I'll see you when I get my next review up. And that is going to be for 
Mortal Kombat from 2021. So look forward to that. But until I get that up, thank you for watching and have a great day.